Hello friends, this is Kingsley and welcome to my channel. So we still wonder why despite your best effort, you can't seem to get that school admission or that professor's attention you so desperately crave. I would ask you to do one thing, just pull out the CVs, the personal statement, the motivation letters, and emails you've used in corresponding with the professors now applying to those schools. Did you know that apart from your CGPAs and your English professors test scores, that more than 60% of school admission refusers are solely based on poor written CVs and personal statements and emails and motivation letters from the school or the professor's point of view. Now, I've already uploaded a video on how to ace your email correspondences with faculty members and professors as to be your supervisors, and you can find that video on my YouTube channel. Today, I will be sharing tips on how to write an irresistible but true academic CV for school admission. So if it's of interest to you, keep watching. And again, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and just encourage others to do the same. Specifically today, I'll be explaining the following and more. One, what a CV is and how that differs from a resume. Two, why a well-written CV is all important. Three, Understanding the standard organization layout of a West structured CV from a North American and a global perspective. Four, identify the essentials of a well written and outstanding CV. Five, know the one must have, if possible, on your academic CVs. Six, common CV errors to avoid. Seven, the three most common CV errors from prospective international students. Now, you don't miss that. The three most common CV errors from prospective international students. Eight, what do professors typically look at for on CVs? And nine, one CV rule to remember. So let's delve straight right into this and let's just start from the very basic stuff. I know we'll have concept of what a CV means. Now, uh, from a very uh, standard point of definition, a CV is a longer academic diary that includes all your experiences, which are academic, experiences, your work experiences, your volunteer experiences, your certificates, you know, scientific meetings attendance, attended, and publications. On the other hand, a resume is simply a one-page summary that contains work experience and background relevant to the job or relevant to the specific uh, school admission you are applying to. And that is a very basic difference, right? Again, just remember that school applications, all your, all your emails to prospective faculty members require CVs and not resume. And again, this must always be at the back of your mind. Your CV must be polished and mistake free. Now, moving on, why is CV such a big deal? I mean, why don't you just write something and then you know, just send it out? Now, CV is a big deal because it represents you. It simply represents you. Now, remember that these schools, these professors, most of them, they've not met with you. They've not interacted with you before. Your CV simply tells them who you are. So when they hold your CV in their hands, they are looking at you. So it represents you. And again, it speaks a lot to your personality. It tells a lot about who you are, how organized you are, how much you pay attention to, the, to, to details. Your CV speaks a lot about all these things. Remember that your CV can help get your foot through the door in getting the school admission or in getting that professor's attention or it can completely close a door for you. So CVs are very, very important because in all, it shows how much you pay attention to details. So moving on, we'll talk about the organization layout of an academic CV that is, you know, good for a school application. Now, I would advise you to adopt uh, this, this layout while writing your CV. First of all, of course, it's your name and your current address and your emails and telephone numbers. And then... Next, you want to write a professional summary. Now, I do find uh, in, in, in the many CVs I've reviewed that some persons have these professional summaries and others don't have it. I would say that professional summaries are nice to have, 
but not a must have so it's it's nice if you have a, pro a professional summary which gives the school or the supervisor an idea of who you are and what you've done in a very succinct manner next you want to have the educational uh, summary which talks about the different schools you've attended you know the degrees you've, uh, you've obtained and you want to have your work experience you know if, if, if you've worked where you have worked you know how long you worked and just the the highlight of the things you did uh, the distinct highlight of the things you did during these different uh, jobs you've had and then again for school admission you want to talk about your research experience you know what research experience do you have on and off or you know on and or off the field what kind of research experience you've had and then again very importantly you want to talk about your awards and academic achievements you know this talks about it talks about your your scholarly attitude your scholarly attributes so you want to talk about your awards and your achievements and very importantly i do find that many persons miss this next step from their from their cvs your volunteer activities and experiences you know life is not just about academics or just about schooling no there's more to life than that so your volunteer activities and experiences are important part of your cvs and you must highlight these different volunteer activities and experiences it gives an insight into what you do in your spare time it gives an insight into your personality so you want to have that well written out on your cv and again you want to have your professional affiliations so if you belong to any professional bodies you want to highlight that also and typically you also want to have uh, presentations you've made at scientific meetings and webinars you want to also have that clearly uh, written up in your cv if you've attended workshops you want to have workshops attended and of course given that this is an academic cv you want to have publications so if you've written papers you've co-authored papers you want to have them clearly written out you know the journals you know the journals that those papers were published you want to have it clearly and distinctly written out even if you have some manuscript in preparation or papers under revision you just want to have them clearly written out and finally you want to have uh names of of referees persons who can speak to your academic competence and can speak to your personality i do find that uh, again in the many series i've reviewed that some persons have this and others don't so i would say that this is advisable but optional so what are the essentials of a well-written cv the first thing you must have in mind is that you have to select a good font and size for your cv so for example you want to select like the times or the times new roman or the garamond and typically i would advise you to use um, a font size of 11 to 12. now very very importantly you want to make sure that the font and the size they are consistent throughout the entire cv i mean i can't overemphasize this you know i've seen cvs that have that have different fonts of different sizes no you, you, you don't want to be that person you want your cv to have very consistent font and size again you want to have consistent spacing and alignment so the spacing between each sub uh, sub parts of your cv should be very very consistent the alignment should be consistent so if they all start on the left they should all start at the same point on the left and then you want to have a uh, clarity you want to write your cv with clarity and aptness when you're describing your work and research experiences so here you don't want to write about every teeny weeny thing you've done you don't write about every thing you've attended to you want to write about the very distinct things in each of your work and research experiences so be very clear and be very apt at this point i've seen cvs where you know you just have like persons just have like tons and tons and dozens of things you know just written again and again it's 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 it shouldn't be like that be clear and be very apt when you describe your work and research experiences. Again, your CVs you have outcome measures. So we're talking about let's say your research experiences. You know, you should have outcome measures. For example, you could say something like this. You know, uh, establish a novel 
a molecular prote protocol to study neurology, bioenergetics, and behavior, which became implemented as a standard operating procedure within the department. Now, I just put that out from my own CV. Now, that speaks about an outcome measure of something you've done and what was the outcome of that thing. Now, very importantly, again, you don't want to be repetitive. You don't want to be too wordy on your CV. So, when I review CVs, I do find sometimes many persons just, you know, copy and paste from one section to the other in their work experiences. No, you don't want to be that person. You want, you know, you don't want to be repetitive, you don't want to be too wordy. Just clearly define the specific distinct things in each of those experiences you've had and not just copy and paste and repeat them. And again, please listen very carefully. And again, every educational work, volunteer, presentations, publication, affiliations must all be dated. Every of these sections must be dated. It's super important. Now, what is that one must have, if possible, for an academic city for school admission? I, I know you've been wondering about this. It's simply publications. The professor, the school, they want to see that you've published scholarly articles. Now, the journals where they are published, they are okay, they are good, they are important. But the most important thing is that you've published something. That is a sign of productivity. Now, another sign of productivity they will be looking at for, of course, is your high, high CGPAs and your academic awards. So, if you ever published a paper, regardless of the journal where the paper was published, please make sure to highlight it in your CV. What are the common CV errors to avoid? Please pay attention to this because this is where you begin to distinguish between one CV that's accepted and another CV that's not accepted. Right. The first common CV errors to avoid is typographical errors. Now, typos on your CVs, they are, unpardon they are unpardonable. Nobody pardons typographical errors on CV. It's a no-no. Typographical errors on your CV just simply shows you don't pay attention to details. It just shows you're not thorough. And really, no school or professor or supervisor will want you if he or she is looking at a typographical error-laden CV. Nobody wants that. The second thing, uh, errors you want to avoid is when you don't date all your relevant training and experiences so poor or no dating on your service make sure all your trainings your work experiences your volunteer experiences your professional body affiliations they must all be dated make sure they are all dated don't turn out a cv that is poorly dated don't do that because it just turns the person away who is looking at that cv the top thing you want to avoid is unexplained gaps in academic and work experiences. You, know, you want to avoid that also. Uh, the fourth thing that you want to avoid, and this is common, and I want you to pay attention to it, is lies or padding on your CVs. You don't want to lie on your CV. There is really, really no, what's the right word? There's no justification for that. You don't want to lie on your CV. Be honest in your CVs. Everything on your CV must be defendable. We are called upon today, tomorrow, a, a year's time. You can defend every single thing on your CV. I mean, it would be a huge disappointment if you lie on your CV and then when you get admitted to that school or that professor takes you on as he's our student to find out that the things you wrote to your CV are not true. How disappointing can that be? So you don't have to lie on your CV. Be honest on your CVs. And one more thing I'll say, please proofread your CV multiple times. When you write it the first time, take a break, take a breather, walk away from it, come back after some hours or even the next day or some days later, you read it again and then have a different set of eyes, you know, to help you just read over the CVs read through the series and make sure there are no typos and these other errors I've just talked about. 
So what are the three most common CV errors from prospective international students that you must avoid? So when I review CVs, uh, as I talk with other uh, professors when they review CVs, these are the three most common errors that you must avoid. One is the spacing and punctuation errors. So very commonly on CVs from international students, we do find a lack of space after a period or double punctuation. So these are very common errors. So again, please pay close attention and make sure that these errors are not on your CVs. Two is the improper use of capitals. So uh, when CVs are proofread, you know, it's important that you use uh, capitals very appropriately as much as possible on your CVs. And three is just poor alignment. So ask yourself a simple question. Do all the lines all start on the left at the same spot? Do all the dates on the right, do they all align? You know, it's important that you have proper alignment of the lines and the dates of the entire layout of your CV should all be properly aligned. Now, if your CV is sloppy, it's just send out the message that, you know, you're not paying attention to details. And this is one of the most important thing of, uh, you know, the most important part of being a student or a scientist is paying attention to details. So please, again, pay attention to these three very common errors that we do find on CVs from prospective international students. So just head us straight to what do professors and schools look at for on CVs? You know, I think the first thing that they look at for is evidence of repeated excellence. That is the first thing they look at for. And this could be like successes as an undergrad, as measured by your GPAs and awards, or successes in your master's program as measured by your publications and awards. So when they see evidence of repeated excellence, they are attracted to such candidates. The second thing they look out for is participating in something more than just science. You know, now I'm talking about, you know, having to put every little last thing you've done, attended or helped with on your CVs. No, but the things that you've done outside of science that are important, you know, you should include them on your CVs. And typically, this comes other volunteer activities or other pastime activities. Now, this helps to give a sense of your personality. So it can be something as little as, you know, let's just say like an avid runner participating in five kilometers, 10 kilometers or half marathons. Or something more involved, like president of uh, university uh, XYZ diversity and equality initiative, or secretary general of this group, or just things you've done outside of science. Now that helps to give a sense of your personality and what you do in your spare time. So it's important to understand that you know uh, schooling, academics, it's holistic. It's not just the book side of things, not just the research side of things, but there are other components to it as well that the professors and the schools look at for. And thirdly, is any skill sets and techniques you have mastered are also looked at for. But again, I would stress that with this last part, which is this uh, mastered skill sets and techniques, that any skill sets you've mastered, any techniques, as little as it might look to you, let that be on your saving. And the more elaborate techniques, remember that you can always learn them. So that should not discourage you. If it's just the basic techniques you've learned, you know, put them in your CV and be proud of it, you know. And finally, one CV rule to remember. You know, this is important because, <laughs> it's very important because persons send CVs and then when you open up the CVs, you're just blown away by how, how untidy it is. So always send your CV as a PDF format. Remember this, always send your CV as a PDF format. Now, if for any reason at all you're using a Word format, please again and again, send a clean copy. That is, you need to go to the review part of your Word document 
accept all changes and confirm that there is nothing tracked remaining for new people open the file to see you know the last thing you want is that somebody opens your cv it's in a word format and as soon as it's opened up all the different changes you've made all the different track changes just shows up that's very unsightly and you don't want to be that person so i believe so strongly that with a well-written uh, cv like this you are very certain to get favorable responses from schools and potential supervisors so this brings us to the end of this video and again please feel free to leave your comments below and again as always be free to share this video with as many as you think might benefit from from this all right you take good care and i'll see you again soon bye for now